Good morning. It's Lauren Lockman from the Tanglewood Wellness Center in Costa Rica. I've been asked this morning to talk a little bit about fruit seeds, specifically watermelon seeds. We've got someone here that likes, or a couple people like the taste of them, and are asking why not eat them if they taste good. And it's it's a it's a good question. Um, in fact, you know, I'll tell you when I first started traveling and speaking about raw food 20 years ago, I was surprised by how many times people said to me, "Do you eat your fruit seeds?" And I would say, no, why would I do that? And they would say, because well, they're loaded with nutrients, right? So we have this idea that if something's good for us, more must be better. There typically is more nutrition in seeds than there is in the fruit. Now, why is that? Now, let's just break that down. Why would that be true? Mm. Because it's meant to turn into a whole plant. It's yeah, that, that, that seed has the, the germ of the new plant and food to feed the seed for some period of time. Now, some seeds ha are relatively small, like, like uh, watermelon seeds, sunflower seeds, poppy seeds, fig seeds. Mustard they seeds. don't have a lot of, of nutrients there. They can't sustain themselves for a long time. Other seeds take a different strategy. They are much larger, like mango seeds and avocados and <laughs> mame sapote and those things. No one's going to swallow that by accident. Um, <laughs> those seeds are able to actually withstand uh, quite a bit of time to wait until the optimal conditions are met. Because, you know, think about this, in a rainforest, you've got a solid, more or less solid canopy. Now every once in a while a tree falls. And trees don't live as long here, typically as they do in North America. In fact, I don't know if you're aware of this, but the, the further away from the equator you get, the longer trees live and the, and the slower they tend to grow. So if you make your way from the North Pole and you come down through uh, the Arctic region, the first forests you come to, you know, in, no matter what direction you go, in, will be evergreen forests. And some of the trees are probably two feet tall, and they're hundreds of years old. Okay? They grow very, very slowly because they have a short growing season. It's cold most of the time. They don't have a lot of chance to really grow. Here in the tropics, things grow much more quickly. Okay, we get lots of rain, we get lots of sunlight, the, the temperature is warm enough to support that plant's active growth year-round. And there is a, a precept in nature that is typically true, and that says the faster something grows, the faster it tends to die. So softwood trees tend to grow faster than hardwood trees. The wood's not as strong. They don't usually hold up as long. Hardwood trees tend to go much more, grow much more slowly. So here, a tree might live to about 75 on average, where obviously in many parts of the world they can live much, much longer than that. And when a tree falls, it creates a hole in the canopy. Now that hole in the canopy allows for sunlight to come through, and all of a sudden there's going to be a whole bunch of things competing to take advantage of that new resource. Because that, that little seedling needs sunlight. It's not going to do very well after a certain point. It might germinate, just as most seeds can germinate in the dark, it might germinate, but after a while, it's not going to really grow unless it has sunlight. So when there's a hole in the canopy, these seeds that have an advantage that have all these nutrients, they've been able to wait for however long they needed to, to be able to take advantage of that and start coming up. Let's back up for just a second and, and remember that plants make seeds for one reason and one reason only. What is it? To re uh, propagate the root themselves. To propagate themselves. Okay, every species on the planet has one primary, one primary focus, and that is on making as many copies of itself as possible. That's what the plants want to do. Their seeds are specifically designed in order to do that. Now, if that's true, does the plant want you to eat the seeds? Nope. No. No, the plant does not want those seeds to be eaten. Okay? The plant wants those seeds to be able to get into the ground. There, are, there is an exception, I've talked about this with some of you before. Nuts are seeds that are designed to be edible. They're edible seeds. It's a different strategy, okay? The nut tree makes the seed edible to encourage the squirrels and chipmunks and other animals to bury them, to essentially plant new trees for it, knowing that many of those, those new seeds are gonna be dug up and eaten, but not all of them, they're gonna miss some and those are going to become new trees. And they have a better chance of succeeding because the squirrels and chipmunks, in order to get them to sprout, have actually put them in the ground. They've buried them. 
Okay, they're, they're like little gardeners working for the tree. But fruit seeds, you know, a watermelon plant, that vine has put a lot of energy. Think about all the energy that must go into making a 10 or 20 pound watermelon. There's a lot of energy to convert yeah. a, a sunlight into sugar. From one okay? seed. And so that plant wants to be sure that, that the seeds do not get eaten. They want those seeds to succeed. They've got a significant, now, they don't have a significant investment in each seed because a watermelon might have hundreds of seeds. I don't really know how many, but it could have a lot of seeds. Whereas the mango has a much larger investment in each seed. Okay? It's put much more into it. But the bottom line is, the plant does not want the seeds to be eaten. So what does it do to discourage animals from eating the seeds? They don't taste good makes them toxic. It makes them poisonous. Most fruit seeds are poisonous. Okay? And the plant does that on purpose because its sole interest is in getting that seed into the ground and making sure that animals don't eat it. So by making it toxic, it can pretty well discourage most species from eating the seeds. Now humans come along and say, if we cook these, right, these are a delicacy in Asia. They, they cook watermelon seeds and eat them all over the place. But most people on the planet don't eat watermelon seeds. Now, we swallow some by accident, right? It's hard not to. What happens to those seeds that we swallow by accident? We don't chew up? They pass through. They pass right through the system completely unchanged. Okay, we are, this is part of nature's plan. We swallow the seeds. Now, remember, you know, if we were living in nature, what would happen? We would pass those seeds back onto the ground. We'd leave them on the ground in perfect fertilizer our own fertilizer. So that's actually an advantage to the seed. If they're not being buried, they're, they're being deposited on the ground in perfect fertilizer. The plant's happy to have you swallow the seed, that's okay, but it doesn't want you to chew them up. Now, how, how serious an issue is this? Well, I can't actually speak to the toxicity of watermelon seeds, but most of you have probably heard that apple seeds are toxic, most fruit seeds are. But people often say, yeah, but it's not a big deal, right? What, what do apple seeds have? Strychnine. No? Arsenic. Arsenic. It How is. much? Enough to be a problem? If you ate a half a cup of apple seeds, you would die. If you chewed them up and actually, you know, ate them. Not swallowed them and passed them through, but if you actually consumed them, blended them up and made an apple seed drink, you would actually have something very toxic that could kill you. Now, will one apple seed, if you chew it up, hurt you? No, probably not. Our, our livers are designed to detoxify things that we would encounter in nature. And, and fruit seeds may be one of those things that they're intended to be able to handle. This is, you know, we're fruit eaters. We're consuming toxic things. Every once in a while, we're going to chew one up by accident. The body has made it so that we can, we can do that. We can have that experience without being seriously, seriously injured by it. But no one's going to chew a half a cup of seeds by accident. That's a purposeful thing. And if we do that, we're ignoring our taste buds because they usually don't taste very good, right? They don't taste very good because toxins tend to taste bad to us. They tend to be bitter. In fact, something I've shared many times before, but you know, in, in Ayurveda, uh, they say, in some other systems, they say, we have taste buds for bitter foods, therefore we should eat them. And natural hygiene has always said, we have taste buds for bitter foods because toxic things are bitter. So that taste bud tells us, don't eat this. Now what happens if we've cultivated a taste for things that are bitter? That tastes good, right? That's what we think. But if you really want to know, you know whether something's appropriate or not, you might not actually want to do this, but if you gave it to a baby, right, you would see a pretty quick response. Baby's not going to want to chew up an apple seed or a watermelon seed. They're much happier with the fruit. And so, you know, part of it may be, for some of us, we may have cultivated, cultivated this habit. We've been eating things that are bitter for years. We, now we like them. We're accustomed to them. It tastes good. It's like, I mean, how many of you liked beer the first time you had it? Anybody? It's nasty. How about coffee? Yuck. Right? We cultivate a taste for it because we've decided to. Beer? That's going to make us feel good, we think. Um, and coffee is going to allow us to you know, stay awake, to, to give us a bit of a charge.
But no one drinks these things at first because they taste good. We have to become accustomed to their taste before most people actually like these things. And the same would be true of the, the bitter taste in fruit seeds. So that's, I think the answer is that fruit seeds are generally toxic because the plant is attempting to protect them and get them into the ground. It does not want them to be eaten. Now, the other thing that comes along, so again, we, we, you know, we, might, have, we might have this uh, custom, we might have become accustomed to eating bitter things and like the flavor now. But the other thing that happens is we have these big brains right? Which often get in our way. And so we're thinking, they've got tons of nutrients, I should eat them. That's what I've heard over and over again. Remember that like every other species, all we need to do is eat the whole foods that our bodies are specifically adapted for. We never need to eat a watermelon seed or an apple seed or a peach seed or anything else. There's nothing in them that we need, okay? And there's, there's no benefit to eating them. All we need to do is eat the whole foods that our bodies are actually designed for. Those are the things that would taste good to any baby. Okay? So, any questions about that? Is that, is that helpful? Yeah?